This is part three of our series on track logs and waypoints. This one showing you how to access them on your Samsung tablet. What you're looking at on the screen is actually my Samsung tablet. Now, as I move the mouse around here, I'm running my computer and I've got the screen up on the computer. So where you see a mouse, this would be where your finger because of the um, touch screen on the on the tablet so it doesn't have a mouse attached to it obviously so just consider that as where you're placing your finger so you'd open up Aussie Explorer on your tablet and it looks decidedly different from how it looks on um, on your desktop now Aussie Explorer comes with a very badly detailed map of the world which is really great uh, for almost nothing anyway it will We'll load another map into it and I'll show you how to do that. Down in the bottom corner, this this arrow here, you can see we're, we're in Melbourne. Um, if, and this, this uh, minus full and plus here just uh, enables you to zoom in and out. So at the tip of the arrow, that point there is is actually where it's, uh, it's saying that we are. And at the moment, it's pretty right. We're down the bottom corner of Australia. On the bottom of the screen down here, you've got the number of satellites that it's uh, connected to. Anyway, let's um, ignore that and we'll go up to open a map. Now, this folder up here is where you have all your maps. And I've got uh, quite a list and different folders. I've put them in um, states and things like that. The one that I use most when traveling, apart from when I want really good detail on the on the tracks um, around the high country, is this Fe HEMA 150 Seamless. And it's an Australia map. And this is the one that we used when on the other two um, videos that I did and I'll just scroll out a little bit further and at least now it's showing you up a Ferntree Gully where I'm sitting right now. Now I can't hold this mouse down and you can't move the map with your finger you'd normally just try and drag the map across but you can't do it because it's locked into GPS mode and it won't move away from here. If you go across to the left and you touch this little button here the sign comes up, the notice up the top, GPS tracking's off. Now you could put your finger here where the mouse is and just run the map across the screen. Now if we want to go back to where we were uh, with our waypoints and our track logs, I'll just scroll out a little bit to make it a bit quicker to get across back to Port Augusta and Adelaide. There's Adelaide, there's the Gulf up here and we'll put Port Augusta pretty much in the middle that where that little bullseye is and now we can scroll back in using the plus okay so you can see that that map there looks exactly like it did uh, on the desktop it's the same it's the same map just you've got different icons and things down the side here on your tablet as I say it's completely different to the to the desktop now if I uh, want to now load those waypoints the top button, the one up on the very top will turn it off. So it's the one under that. You touch that and you come up to operation. Click on operation and now you've got options with waypoints, routes, tracks and uh, show the map menu. If we want to load those waypoints, we'll, put, we'll click on the waypoint option and it comes up again. And what we're looking for is to import waypoints, this one here. So we import waypoints, it'll come up with the file and the folders. If you remember when we did the last video, there was track log folders and waypoint folders. Well, that's what it's showing you up here. Click on the waypoint folder and it's got all the waypoints that I've actually transferred into the tablet. And the one we're looking for is the Port Augusta 2 Sejuna. Click that. You're getting a little sign up there to say the file's loaded. So we click finish. And there's the waypoints. Now keep um, just note that they actually are, have got the same names that we that we uh, named them in the other video and if I scroll down here just keep holding the mouse down intersection and so it goes so they're exactly the same as they were um, on the desktop now let's say that you're traveling along up on the Wakefield Highway here so I've just moved the map so that this, this little centre bullseye is basically where you are at the moment, given that I've turned the tracking off. If I hit that arrow again, it'll take us straight back to, uh, to Melbourne and, and where we are. But at the moment, it's putting this in the centre. Now, 
you're, you're traveling up here and you're thinking, well, you know, distance to the waypoints. This is really what they're all about. If you go to this uh, third icon down, or second if you ignore the off button, the second one down and click that, it brings up a list of what you want to look at. Now, we're on at the moment the way the main map. The one that I use most uh, is this one, nearest waypoint. If I click on that, it brings up a list on the right hand side of the nearest waypoints and it's telling me at the moment that we are 8.82 kilometers from Port Augusta. That's from that waypoint that we put in and we're 11.7 .7 from the left turn on the air highway. That, and that is from this dot here. This is from this center of the screen. If I move this down and move us further down the highway away, you'll see when I let it go, that they all change. So Port Augusta now 19.2. So because I can't um, show you this actually moving without actually going over there and driving down the highway, this is as good as I can do. So as you travel up here, let's assume this is, this in your, uh, when you are moving in your car, will be the arrow head here, um, just like your, your GPS in your car. And as you get closer and closer to Port Augusta, it, it diminishes. So you get a good idea um, how far to any waypoint that you've put in, be it um, you know roadside stop or anything like that. Now, and as it turns out, of course, I get an email and I get that little message coming in. So just ignore that. That's just coming into my computer. Um, if you look at uh, from the point, if we sort of said from Port Augusta and put the, I'll just drag this across and let's say we're in the middle and we're only 950 metres from where I dropped that waypoint. So June is saying 388. Now that is as the crow flies because it's GPS data. It's not tracking around like your uh, GPS in your car would. It's not taking into account all the corners. It's a straight line between there and the line in Sejuna. And if I scroll out quite a bit and move the map a little bit more. It's basically showing you from the waypoint under there over to Sejuna, which is on here. So it's a dead straight line, when in actual fact you're going to be going around here. Um, so it's not really that that useful um, city to city in, in a big distance like that, say Melbourne to Perth or anything like that. But what it is really good at is as you're travelling down uh, the highway and we'll hold the mouse down and just scroll back up a bit and you may be um, looking for oh, this iron knob for instance let's find a straight one okay so let's say let's say you were here at this waypoint and you're looking for the nearest and it'll actually do these in the nearest waypoint so it's 217 meters from that dot there is a waypoint that i've dropped there but the next one along is 48.9 kilometers away which which should be pretty accurate because that's a fairly straight road okay and that would be the one that i dropped here now you can see that um, Port Augusta now is, is down the bottom so it's it's giving you the the closest waypoint and as the name says nearest waypoint list as you travel along that list obviously will change as as uh, these distances change and some are getting closer and some are getting further away this um, green box is actually a series of bars as you are traveling towards uh, waypoint number seven this this line will be green. The Port Augusta line will be white and that's because this number is increasing. So if you're traveling away from something this number is getting bigger and this line is white and this would be white and that would be white and these cut, these ones at the top as you're traveling towards them would be in green. So you end up with this box of partly white, partly green um, stripe you know and it took me a little while to work out what that was for but that's what it is and that's quite handy just to have a quick look now you can take that off the screen and go back to the menu there it is there and just go back to main map there's a lot of other things here you can use your tablet um, to give you speed readings as well um, GPS speed of course um, also up here um, height above sea level 
So it's it's very handy um, to be able to just look at um, different menus, but it's the one, the nearest waypoint, um, waypoint navigation and route navigation I really don't use much at all. Um, and then I just go back to the main map when I want to have a look at that. Um, now the same applies to, if we scroll back out, let's have a look at the track that we put in because it should follow that road pretty much. We'll leave the waypoints there. We go back to the top icon. We click on operation again. This time we want tracks. Load user track file. And the track logs are in here. And we scroll down to Port Augusta to Sejuna, PLT. That's the one I want. Track file loaded. Finish. And there it is. You can also change, uh, so as you're going along, you know, it's quite handy um, just to sort of see where the turns are and things like that. Um, as I say, probably not, not so much on the air highway, it's just, it's, a, it's just a straight road, but um, these do come into play when you've got um, corners coming up and you can actually see the, the, the track going off to the right when there's an intersection or something like that. Um, you can you can do a lot with them. You can change the colour of the tracks and things like that. So if you go up to this menu again, and this time you go into configuration, and you go to tracks, then you've got um, whether I want to show my track tail, which is the the track behind me. Um, this box here, log track to file. So when Aussie Explorer is running on your tablet, it will record your daily track, and that's the one I mentioned last time. That's going to be a lot more detailed than the track we put in. Um, you can you can pretty much change uh, almost everything you know, so say colors and things like that so it just depends on the map you don't want a red track if you've got a red a red um, yeah red track if you've got um, red roads on your map and things like that um, so let's just go back you have got um, other options again for waypoints and waypoint color waypoint size uh, all those sort of things so you can you can play around with those and and uh, really set it up how you like but I find those colors kind of nice and easy to look at uh, and at the end of the day you can go back and back and there we are um, you can also use this to drop waypoints uh, if you found a nice camp spot somewhere along the way and you you, you dropped off the road somewhere if you put that bullseye there and if you were running if the GPS was running it would it would be there anyway and you can actually just drop a waypoint see I've put in there so it's 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 added another one so that's just something that you can do if you find a nice spot and you want to record where it was gives you the uh, Latin long that's probably all we need to do on this one for the moment so uh, I hope that's been useful and we'll come back and uh, give you a little bit more later on.